morning, everybody. It is Thursday morning. It is 8.30, so I have loads of time before my shift starts, and I realized I never started a vlog for this week. And I actually finished something. First of all, let's start on Christmas stuff. All done with everything I need to do for Christmas. I did all my baking. I did all my wrapping. One present is still on its way. I had said in a previous vlog that I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to arrive on time, but according to the tracking number, should arrive tomorrow so we're gonna keep our fingers crossed for that i even did my holiday nails like i've been hoping to do for like ages i wish i was talented enough to do actual designs because this is the best i can do myself but it looks pretty good now that's all set and out of the way i'm just sitting here drinking my peppermint mocha coffee that i made at home and uh, I think the only thing that I finished, yes, that is correct. Sorry, I'm like thinking ahead and you're not, you're not in here with me. Uh, I finished Blame It on the Mistletoe. It was cute. I said in a previous vlog that I wasn't impressed by it. And for the most part, it wasn't. It was the ending that really saved it for me. So our two main characters, and of course, I'm like totally spacing on their names. But one is in the UK, one is in New Jersey. The one in New Jersey is actually like an Instagram influencer. And this girl joins um, a contest to get 15,000 uh, followers by, I don't know, by Christmas. And the competition is like, if you win, you get to join in on this group. Or if you lose, you have to delete your account. So there is a lot riding on the line here. And so her idea to try to gain all these followers is like switch places with one of her followers for Christmas, which is where, where the, the girl in the UK comes in. She's a, a fan, she like volunteers, and they switch places for Christmas. And the girl in the UK is also having her own personal issues. So in a way, they're both kind of escaping from what they're dealing with because the, um, the social media influencer is dealing with some personal stuff as well. So yes, this is a fun thing, but they're really doing it to escape something. And uh, for the most part, I'm like, yeah, okay, this is cute. It wasn't towards like, it wasn't until like halfway through that we really realized what's going on with the social media influencer and they start dropping hints of that something bigger was at play. I'm like, ooh, this is interesting. And I also like how at the end, uh, like the overall message was, it doesn't matter if Christmas is perfect or if your plans go how you want them to, Christmas is spending it with the people you love, and that is home. And I'm like, oh, man, it's so cute. So I was half tempted to rate this three and a half stars, but I'm, right now I'm giving it four stars. It was very cute. Not gonna lie though, um, Holly, haha. -ha. Holly, yes, Holly. Oh, I really hope that's her name. The, the girl in the UK, she writes letters to herself. After every Christmas, she writes herself a letter to remind next year's holly like what happened the previous year and it started off with one of these letters and not gonna lie it was so long i thought it was insufferable but when it ended with another letter to herself i'm like okay that's that's cute i like how we came full circle but to start off like that i'm like ooh. but overall it was pretty cute this was prancer which is i think 20 points see so, you now i'm going to turn on the computer for a second I was reading my emails and then I realized I didn't actually do an intro for this vlog. So blame it on the mistletoe. L is the social media influencer. Holly, yes, L and Holly. After all that, those were the girls' names. But I'm looking up Reindeer Readathon, all the prompts. All right, now that I see all the points in front of me, it was for Prancer, which is a book with a travel element in it. And the travel element for mine was, you know, they switched places for the holidays. One was in New Jersey, one was in the UK, so they flew. And that was a big deal of the story. And this was worth 20 points. So at this point, I think I have 65 points for Nutcracker because I already did Dasher, which is a short story or novella, which I did Oddball for, 10 points. A book that recently caught my eye that was Vixen and that was 20 points. And I know Lore Olympus was um, a five star prediction read. Which one was that one? Comet, which was 15 points. So Comet, 15 points, Lore Olympus, Vixen, 20 points, which I read the Matzo Ball for, and Dasher. So 10, 30, 50, 65. So right now we have 60 points for Nutcracker. My goal this week is actually to complete three prompts. 
I feel like I've been you know kind of loosey-goosey only doing one a week so far and you know this weekend is Christmas and I do want to try to get at least three more prompts out of the way. I'm actually halfway through Nick and Noel's Christmas playlist which is an ebook that I got through Hoopla and that has uh, for the most part a red cover and that I'm reading instead of um, Christmas Shopaholic because that was the original one I had planned in my TBR I think. Yeah, Donner, a book with green or red is its primary color on the cover. And so that's what Nick and Noel's um, Christmas playlist is about. And I'm halfway through that. So hopefully we'll get an additional 20 points. I haven't gotten further in the holiday swap. Uh, I've been really focusing on these eBooks and I may start reading more eBooks because reading eBooks through Hoopla, I was able to actually read in bed because my husband goes to bed pretty early and I, I usually would have to turn off the light, but with my ebook on my phone, I didn't have to. So maybe I should start reading more ebooks. All after all that and said and done, I really want to actually finish and start Letters to Father Christmas by Christmas. So the goal right now is to finish Nick and Noel's Christmas playlist, get a little bit farther in, in the holiday swap, and finish start and finish Letters to Father Christmas. So those are the plans for this week. Hopefully that last straggler present will arrive in time. And uh, that's it for an intro and uh, as for an update. I'm gonna finish my coffee and then get started on my tours for work. All right, so I'm currently on my lunch break. Uh, it was really busy over at the Little Branch this morning and I didn't do any reading. Didn't read a single page. Cause not only did I do all my chores, we had like a steady stream of people coming in and out today. And I, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm the one that's in charge of our like TikTok account through the library. And so I had to work a lot on that because I'm, I'm trying to get it done so I don't actually have to worry about posting on Christmas day. Cause I actually have a series called Staff Recommendation Saturday and Christmas day falls on a Saturday. So I'm like, all right, well I need to make the post now so I can just set it up and just like quickly go on our on our account because it is on my phone. Just post it real quick and then call it. So that's what I did today. So no reading, but very productive at work. And normally because it is a split shift, I have an hour and a half break. The ha extra half hour is more like for traveling time. So I'm home now. I have about 30 minutes before I do have to leave to go back to work to finish out my shift. When I got home, I saw I have a package for me and I'm really hoping that this is my husband's final present. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of terrified that this is my present from him because he also has access to my Amazon account, I mean, our Amazon account at this point. But I'm gonna hope that he thought to put his name on the recipient label. <gasps> it's, yes, oh my God. It came so early. I locked out. I super locked out. It's open. So I don't like that. So we're going to just close it real quick. This is super exciting. <coughs> well, I think that that's my toasted sandwich. So I'm going to go get that. I don't want you to fall. There we go. I also got my new glasses. So I get my glasses through iBuyDirect. They're, they're cheaper than going through the brick and mortar like doctors. It's really funny. I went to get my eyes checked. Hold on, let me rewind a little bit farther. So these are actually my backup pair. I had like these um, like oval, not oval-ish metal pair that the, I had them for so long. I think I had them for about five years and the screw just randomly fell out. And I did it a couple more times and the last time it fell out, I lost it at work. And so when I tried putting in a screw from one of those replacement kits, it didn't fit, it was too long. So I'm like, all right, I'll just wear my backup pair because you know, still my current script. Just wear them until I can finally replace them because I love those glasses. I love the 90s aesthetic. But obviously by this point, I needed to get my eyes checked. I pushed it for far too long. You're supposed to do it once a year and it had been five years. But now I have insurance through work, it wasn't a problem. But when I went to get them checked, the lady at the desk was really funny. He's like, oh, your insurance covers up to 50% of range. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, let me try on, let me try on some. The cheapest pair of frames they had was $200. That's just the frames. 
not including the lenses or if I wanted, oh, and she's like, oh, and you obviously want, you know, a coating on it to prevent them from scratching, which was an additional $45. So minimum, minimum, I was spending maybe $160 in glasses just through my eye doctor. And I'm like, that, that is not happening. Especially when I know I can get them for way cheap through I Buy Direct. I did splurge this time though. I'll admit that. For these two, I got the pair that I wanted in a super cheap frame, but I actually splurge on some like blue light protection. Oh, so these are actually the cheap pair I got. So for these, the frames were $9, and if I wanted regular lenses, nothing with the blue light thing, the lenses would have been 7 And that's not including shipping, which, which would have been, what, another $5 or so? But before shipping, if I just wanted the most basic pair, I would have spent under $20 on these. I got the blue light protection since I am on my computer a lot. And so these were about 30 with the blue light protection. And the anti-scratch coating was already included. So already saving money. Oh, they're cute. It's funny, I only got them as like a backup throwaway pair because I always, now that they're so cheap, me being able to get them so cheap, I always get, I always try to get rather, excuse me, a backup pair in my current scripts. But these are pretty cute. I'm still gonna keep these and wear these occasionally. These are actually one of the basic pair that I got. I think um, I got these on sale and so the frames are probably like 20 bucks and I just got basic lenses. So these are already under 30. These I did not get on sale. Well, it's funny, those pink pair weren't on sale either. The frames are usually that, that cheap apparently. I did also splurge on the blue light protection on these. The frames on these are normally $30. Yeah, hello, welcome back my friend. That's really funny. That makes me nervous, but I understand why it's like that. So I'm nearsighted in one eye, but not the other. You can see there's a distinct thickness difference between the two. But the frames on these are $30. In normal basic lenses, like I said, were seven. But for an additional $10, I got the blue light protection since I am on my computer a lot. And I can kind of sort of, it's interesting. You can see a slight blue sheen when light hits them. Like when you're wearing them, you don't see it, but you can see the little blue light sheen on these, which is super interesting. You can't see it on camera, but I can definitely see it in person. So in total, these were 70 bucks, which is half of what I would have spent had I bought glasses in person at my eye doctor. And of course, after I bought these, uh, I ended up getting an ad for, um, half off lenses shortly afterwards. So I bought a third pair, but these I actually, I splurged a little bit on the frames because the frames were also on sale. And because the lenses were half off, I just splurged on transitions on top of blue light protection. Cause I want to eventually get sunglasses in my current script as well. But I figured, you know what, for these we'll try the transitions. And if not, I'll just get these, but in sunglasses. If you want sunglasses as prescription sunglasses, you would just get glasses and then change the tint of the lens, which isn't that much more expensive. But we're gonna try the transitions. We're gonna see how I feel about them. But those haven't arrived and I'm not expecting those to arrive anytime soon. I actually literally just bought those. That ad got me good. But this is exciting. I'm so excited that my husband's present actually came early when there was a good chance of it not arriving on time at all. So I don't have time to wrap it now because I do now need to leave in 15 minutes. I wanna eat my sandwich, go to work, finish out my shift and uh, wrap that tonight. And I don't have to worry about Christmas anymore. I may actually bake a couple things either tonight or tomorrow, most likely tonight since it is Christmas Eve Eve because we're, uh, we're pretty much almost done with all the baking I did originally. We kind of ate through it. And granted, I did it two weeks before Christmas. And the fact that we still have a couple stragglers and we're just about done with it now, we did pretty good for two weeks. But yeah, that's it. I'm just super excited that uh, that present came. And I'll, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Hello everybody. So it's after Christmas. I had hoped to do an outro for this week much sooner. 
I had big plans this week. I was going to finish not one, but three prompts this week. I was going to do a little bit of extra baking and finish off Vlogmas with a bang and, you know, thoroughly enjoy Christmas. And everything went freaking awry. I use Movavi for editing and I finally treated myself and updated my software because I think I bought it in back like 2014, 2015 and it was starting to really act sluggish. I'm like, all right, maybe it's just that severely out of date now. And so I paid, I paid to update it. And ever since updating it, it would stutter so bad and freeze so bad. I literally would make a single cut and then it would look like blah, 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 for a full minute before it stopped. And then I would make another cut and then it would do it again. And the, um, which video was it? My mediocre books of 2021. That video should have taken an hour to edit. It took five, five because the editing was so weird and I just didn't have the energy to fight with it anymore. I reached out to my Bobby and they said, oh, you need to unclick something. And I did that and it didn't work. And they're like, well, now you have to go on this link so we can like go into your computer and look. I ended up updating my computer, updating all the drivers. Heck, I even updated from Windows 10 to Windows 11. I defragged, I did a disk cleanup. I did everything and then tried it this morning and it seems to me okay. It stuttered like once or twice, but it's not terrible, but I think it's okay now. And that was for my latest book tag, 12 days of Christmas book tag that should eventually go out. And I'm like, all right, so it's okay. It seems okay. So now I'm gonna edit this week's vlog and see how it goes. Cause if it's still bad, I am going to have to follow through with Movavi and click on that link. But that, so, Vlogmas completely derailed. It's now after Christmas and I'm still doing Vlogmas, but you know, those videos are still going up because I did put time and effort into those videos. But because I was focusing on that, I didn't uh, read as much as I wanted to. I did complete something, so I'll get back to that in a second. But I did not do the three prompts like I wanted to. Didn't do some extra baking like I wanted to. And can you believe we had car trouble Christmas day? So Christmas Eve, I went to my aunt and uncle-in-laws, right? And it started stuttering on the highway. This is the new car that we bought. It's new to us. We bought a used car two or three months ago and it started stuttering on the highway, which of course made me very nervous. And then the next day we got a check engine light and it was like, you know what? We have freezing rain here. They're saying don't drive if you don't have to. And the car is stuttering. I don't feel comfortable driving to my dad's Christmas day because my dad lives about an hour away and I was going to drive the hour to go see him. Because just our luck, the car stutters on the highway, even if we were safe and like pulled over safely, who's coming to get us? It's Christmas day. So I ended up having to cancel plans with my dad on Christmas day and ended up just being an absolute sad sack about it. My last pair of glasses came in and I really like them. They're cute their transitions and we're going to see how the transitions work today i actually was meant to already be at work my as i'm leaving as i was putting on my boots to leave the house this morning I had work at nine i was putting on my boots at 8 40 when my boss called me saying hey a bunch of people called out and uh we need you to come in for the night shift instead i'm like yeah sure absolutely but that also changed my plans for the day because i was going to go to work exercise edit a little bit go to bed but now I'm dressed and ready to go. I don't want to exercise anymore. And I was like, no, I'll just edit and we'll see how it goes. And Nothing has gone according to plan, but things seem to be leveling out now, finally. So the prompt that I did finish, I finished Nick and Noel's Christmas playlist. That is for the book uh, read a book that has red or green as its primary color on the cover. I was going to read Christmas Shopaholic, but I decided against it. It was cute. I mean, it was a holiday romance. I wasn't expecting how Hallmark he was going to be. Like, yes, Nick and Noel. Okay, very Christmassy. But Nick's family, their last name is The Winters, and they live in the town of Mistletoe. And I was like, okay, really laying it on thick. Wasn't expecting that. All right. And like, it's Hallmark where they eventually get together in the end. And uh, 
I wanted something a little bit spicier. At least I was expecting something a little spicier. And this was a little too wholesome for what I like in a romance. It's basically a friends to lovers story. Uh, Nick and Noelle, they grew up to be best friends. They find themselves single. Like Nick gets dumped after coming back from deployment. And Noelle's like F buddy dumps her via Instagram. And they find themselves single and uh, they kiss at this club to make their exes jealous and then they realize there are sparks between them and then things progress from there. But Noelle is hesitant on anything getting further because she lost her parents when she was a child and now she's terrified of losing anything good in her life. And Nick, you know, is very understanding and like helps her through that. Honestly, I thought Nick was a little too perfect. I wish there were some flaws in this guy. I didn't see any flaws. And it was like, all right, you're just a little too perfect. And that's not realistic for me. I mean, to be fair, I'm not reading romance novels for the plot, but I wish there was just a little bit more that I could relate to. And I think it's because this was just a little too wholesome because they don't have sex right away. Granted, they didn't wait very long either. I think their whole relationship lasted a month before they finally got in the hay together. But the moments that they had were very funny. Like the first time they get really physically intimate, they get uh, interrupted by his parents. And that's when they decided to take things slow. And so there were moments that were funny, but definitely a little too wholesome for me. So I rated this three out of five stars. Not terrible, not great, but you know, fun in itself. That was 20 points, I think. So now at this point, I've now have a total of 85 points for Nutcracker. I've started Letters from Father Christmas. I hope to finish that soon. And I think I have two other prompts left this week before, you know, the readathon is over. So in the next vlog, our goal is to finish everything because the goal is to try to actually complete all of the points for Nutcracker. But I guess you'll find out in the next vlog. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I guess it's ta-ta for now. Bye guys.